Hey everybody, Chris here and it's Mead Made and we are back in our series on how to paint 3D prints. So these are all the basics of how I paint my 3D prints. Uh, and we've already gone over the in the first video um, primer, how I prime these models. And the second video was uh, what paints I use and how I thin them down using just plain water. Uh, and I got an eyedropper for that. And then I also talked about color blocking and what that means of basically just getting in your basic shades of color um, blocked in essentially and how to properly layer things. So we've got that done. Hulk right here is the model that we've been doing throughout this series. And you can see that we've got all of his color there. I have not touched his eyes yet because that will be one of the final things. Um, I've just got the whites of his eyes painted. But today what we're going to do is work on ink washes. And I'm going to explain what an ink wash is. And then I'm also going to explain how I make my ink washes. The ink washes I use are DIY. I do have a few that from the Army Painter series that I use on minis from time to time. But for the most part, I honestly make my own ink washes and I really like to make my own. So what is an ink wash? It's watered down ink or paint that you apply to your model that collects in certain areas. And it's typically in the cracks and nooks and crannies. And it's where you can get definition, shading, like in the ears and things like that, even the nostrils, different spots. So ink washes can be any color you want. Like you can actually see here that I've got multiple colors. I've got red, yellow, blues, black, and uh, browns. I got burnt umber, which I really like to make an ink wash out of. Um, if you're going to be using inks, they can be any color, but you can also make an ink wash just out of acrylic paints. Um, that's, these are actually acrylic inks, but you can use acrylic paints and it's pretty much the same process. I've done this in the past, um, but I have found you get a really better result with using an ink and I strongly recommend acrylic inks. So the different types of colors apply to whatever you're painting. So say if you have a model that there is uh, a leather jacket on him, you can actually create a brown ink wash and apply that to be able to get the cracks and folds of that jacket a little darker. Um, for Hulk, I'm going to be just making a black ink wash and really getting in the cracks here and his veins and neck creases and ears uh, I'm just going to wash the whole thing so you can kind of see a little more definition because the cool thing about this model is you can actually see the skin texture and he's got like dimples in his skin and veins and I'm hoping an ink wash is really going to bring that out um, in the dark, in the recessed areas. In the highlighted areas, that's where we're going to be doing dry brush and that is going to be in the next video. Uh, I'm going to explain what dry brushing is. All right, so I'm gonna set this guy aside and then I'm going to get into making an, a wash. So first you're gonna need a container to put your wash into. I actually uh, use these like condiment containers that I buy at the dollar store. It's actually two for a dollar. So this container is 50 cents uh, and it's pretty nice. It's got a nice little cap on it. You can seal so if you accidentally knock it over, it's not gonna spill everywhere as long as it's tight, I have found and uh, you can hold a good amount in there. So I make a good amount of wash at a time. So the great thing about having a cheap bottle uh, is you can mark this thing up and when you're done with it and you don't want it anymore, you just throw it away since this thing was literally 50 cents. So I am going to mark this about middle of the ways right here. And that is going to be our fill line, which is gonna be a lot of wash, but I am perfectly okay with that. So we wanna kind of think about the different things that we gotta put in there. So I'm gonna leave that on the side and then kind of go through what we put in the wash. So first off, water. Uh, an ink wash is watered down ink and uh, paint. 
So we're gonna use water. I've actually got this just purified water that I use. Um, you can use tap water. I honestly recommend just getting a bottle of water. I know it looks like I've been drinking out of this, but I've been actually using this for paints. Um, so this is something I do recommend because if you use tap water, uh, you could have like a lot of iron and minerals in your water and, and then you're going to basically make your ink wash not last as long depending on how much you're making. Um, if that's all you have, that's fine. I have, uh, I've heard from multiple people that you really should be using deionized water, which you can buy at the grocery store. Is That's what you're supposed to be putting in like your irons and things like that. Um, and it's basically, it's removed all the minerals and deposits in the water. It's very purified and refined. Um, but for everything that I've ever done with ink washes, a bottle of water has always been just fine. I'm just making sure it's not a bottle I've been drinking out of. So bottle of water is the first thing you're wanting to get. And it doesn't matter what brand or anything like that, just as long as it's water. The next thing is matte medium. So this is about the only thing that you're gonna to have to get from a hobby store, an art store, or on Amazon. And I will actually put a link to all of these things in the description of the video so you can get them. Um, but matte medium is essentially paint without pigment. So it's just regular paint without any kind of dye or coloring in it. And we're actually going to be putting this in here so it'll actually uh, have a good flow and actually stick to your model and not just have ink wash right off of it and barely stick to your model. So this is actually going to help the wash adhere to the model. So next is finish, uh, rinse aid, dr jet dry. Um, so I bet you're probably wondering why am I using this and taking this out of the kitchen and putting it down here with my painting supplies. Well, this is actually a flow aid, and a flow aid is essentially it helps things move. So you put this in your dishwasher and it helps the water flow off of your dishes. This is going to help the ink wash flow off of your model. So it doesn't just... And you can get a flow aid by Liquitex. Um, Liquitex makes a really good one. I've never used it because I've used finish. The uh, negative side of using finish is it will bubble up. Like so, if you shake your rinse aid, uh, your so if you shake your ink wash a lot, it'll actually have some froth and some bubbling in it because this is a soap still. But it does exactly what you want. Um, and I am cheap always. I'm always trying to come up with the easiest and cheapest way to do anything and. I've always gotten really great results. You might get some bubbling, but there's some ways to uh, remove that by you know squirting this into something else slowly to get the bubbles out. Uh, and then with a brush, you just kind of go over it slowly so it doesn't create bubbles. So the other thing that you're going to need is ink. So you can use an ink wash or you can use acrylic paint. This is actually going to depend on what you have and if you wanna just try it with this, that's fine. I've even made ink washes with just this, rinse aid and water, and I didn't even have matte median because there is already matte medium in this. It's fluid medium. Uh, it has the ink in it. So you can actually just use these three things and add them together in the ratios I'm going to explain. Um, but today I am actually going to be using ink and I strongly recommend using acrylic ink instead of India ink. Um, I just have gotten way better results with this. So that is all of the things that you need to be able to make, uh, your ink wash. So let's say that this is going to be my full line and I'm going to actually mark this full. There we go, so that's my full line. Now, I am going to essentially wanting to do, it's 60-40 when it comes to your acrylic and your water. So if this is going to be my dead center, I'm gonna to wanna to come up about to right here to water. 
And you see how absolutely technical I am with this. I am getting my calipers out and measuring this perfectly. So right here is just past halfway, and I would say that's about a 60 to 40. So I am going to put right beside this H2O, and I'm going to fill my water up to that. Then I'm going to fill to here my matte medium. So I'm going to just say MM. Um, and that's all I really need to do because the rest I'm just putting a few drops here and there and I don't really need to track that and put it there. But this will help me when I'm actually making this. So first things first, I'm gonna go ahead and take my water and be careful not to spill it and just fill this up to the line. Okay, so I've got my water filled up to that line. And the next thing, give this a shake and I'm going to start filling this in. Okay, so I got it pretty much right up to the line. I could probably put a little more in. There we go. Okay. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to cap this, put the cap on it, and I am going to shake this really good and get it mixed in. I need to thin this out really well. Okay. And in the very beginning, you are going to get a lot of suds in this, uh, even with the matte medium. Um, that's why I recommend, like, you know, like, when you're done, you're going to have to just let this set overnight. So this actually <laughs> doesn't froth up as bad. So now, the next part, I'm going to take this off. I'm going to do the jet dry, and I'm going to do about 5 to 10 drops of this, uh, maybe... Yeah, five to ten drops. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And maybe fifteen. Because I have a lot. Okay. So that's all I'm putting there. You can see how technical this is. You just want to be able to get enough in there uh, to be able to get this uh, mixed throughout the solution. So now I'm going to go ahead and mix this around and i'm not going to shake this as much anymore now because like i said that that jet dry it it will bubble up like crazy uh to where you won't even see anything okay and that is it now the next part the next part is i am going to be making a black wash so I am just taking this black wash, and this is Amsterdam brand uh, ink, and I really like this ink. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and fill the eyedropper in it, and I am going to go ahead and add 15 drops to this. And I only am starting there because I, I've made bottles this size, and I know it's probably going to take 15 to 20 drops, but... Uh, I'm going to start at that. So it never hurts to start lower and then test it out on a model and then keep adding instead of the other way around where you got to keep adding more water and, and uh, matte median. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay. So now, I'm going to go ahead put this back on, tighten it really tight now because this can get messy. And now I'm going to stir this around. 
and you can see already how dark this thing got. <laughs> Okay, that's looking pretty good, so I'm going to hold off on any more ink right now. And what I'm going to do is I actually have my paint palette here, and I'm going to just go ahead and pour some of this in here. So you can see how it... You might be able to see there's a little bit of bubbles in it right now, but that's perfectly fine. When you pour it out like that, it kind of removes it because you're kind of bringing the bubbles on the other side of the bottle. So I'm going to go ahead and I have this model. So I've actually got this uh, Ivysar that I painted. It's from uh, Shadow Bonds that you can get on Cults 3D. Um, he is a fantastic artist, but I've had this for a while and just have not done anything with it But it's a good test because this ink wash I can definitely uh, Just repaint over top of it What I'm gonna do is go ahead and grab a brush and I'm going to test this out to see how much of the ink actually collects and uh, How dark it makes everything so I'm just gonna absorb some of this and then kind of just go over it and see what happens. So you can see what the ink wash does. It will actually help collect in different areas, especially if you see on the eye. Like it will just kind of get in those nooks and crannies and those dark spots. So like even in the ear right there. Um... But this is actually doing a really nice job. I actually like how this is turning out. Um, it's bringing out a lot of the definition. It's dark enough. I don't think I want this super dark. Uh, not this type because I'll be using this on multiple types of prints. And especially that we're going to be applying this to my Hulk bust. I don't want him to look super dark, but I just want to bring out some definition. But you can see how... The definition is brought out easily on this. So this is probably dark enough. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and just leave this wash as is. Because even when you look at the mouth, how it got collected in these cracks right there. And it's going to really bring out some good shadows there. Um, that is exactly what I'm wanting. So for me, that's what I've created. I do recommend always, always, always label your bottles. So I know it seems dumb because you're like, how can you not know that this is uh, ink wash? You never know. So I am going to go ahead and label this black ink wash. Okay, so this is my black ink wash now. It's official. And that is how I create an ink wash. Now, uh, I've already shown you kind of how I apply ink washes and what they do but on this Ivisar. But I am right now going to go ahead and apply this ink wash to this entire model. And I am going to... I don't really am too worried about doing it on the head because it's already pretty much black, but I am going to just give a nice even coat through this entire thing and work, look in certain spots to see where it collects because I might, I will make sure that it collects in, in between the teeth and things like that. It's going to give it a little bit of a gritty look and that is what I'm going for here. And realizing that this is not my final pass, like Sometimes when you put an ink wash down, it looks terrible afterwards. But you really have to look at where the cracks are and where you want that definition. So like underneath here during these abs, uh, the neck folds, the face wrinkles, like those are the places and in the ear, these are the places that I really want this ink wash to be. So I'm going to go ahead 
and go through and start applying this ink wash now. So I'm going to go ahead and fill up some more of this. I know I'm gonna need it okay and the great thing about ink wash is I never really care if I put too much in because I make it and it's cheap for me to make and if I waste it oh well <laughs> all right so I got a nice soft bristle brush that I like to use it's just wide and broad and I can really get in some of these bigger areas and cover it quickly the one thing you want to make sure when you're applying this stuff you don't want to just let it run. You want to hurry up and just brush the entire model because you can get these lines, like these drip lines, and it will not look very good. So I am always going to try to focus on some of the main areas first and get those nice and wet. And this is going to be a little messy, at least how I do it. So I am just going to let this drip everywhere and let this thing flow naturally. And sometimes you gotta help it along and create that flow and that channel. Just make sure. And you can kind of see what I was talking about, about that original, making sure you catch those drip lines because you will get them and it'll make your model not look the greatest. Okay, now I'm gonna go in on the ears and face. Try to get some of that definition. So you see how I'm just putting some globs of ink all over it, not being afraid of what I'm getting and where I'm getting it because I am going to go back over this with a paper towel and do some quick daubing on it. So you can see how just doing this ink wash, now I can see every tooth and it just works out really well. Okay. All right, so one thing I'll use is just like these facial cotton pads and I will just wipe it softly and trying to get some of those big highlight areas and like notice where I'm rubbing too. So like the areas that I know aren't going to really have shadow. So I don't want those places highlighted, so I'm going to just wipe it down. This is one of those things that, you know, you can just paint brush in certain areas if you wanted to and only focus on those cracks. But this is kind of a thing that I don't know why I do, but I like to do it. Um, so then I'm going to just keep kind of brushing and making sure I get those in those areas I'm wanting. like his neck. Really, you're just looking for any ink that might be pooling in areas you might not want it to pool in. Um, you can see how I've got it pooling in the corners of his mouth. I actually want that. In the corners of his eyes, I want that. So like it's really wherever you want it to be, you can drop some more ink in, like I want more in his ears. So, and I can get a smaller brush too if I wanted to, to do that. But 
that is pretty much it. That is how I use my ink washes. Um, and I might go back over in certain little areas and wipe this down a little. Like to try to get where it's collecting and it shouldn't be. And it's looking pretty slick. So there we go. Looks like the chin, I wouldn't want it. Some of the cheek. And that is really it right there. So he is pretty much done. Now I'm going to let him dry and show you what it looks like finished with an ink wash. Um, but already you can kind of see how some of that definition has really just started popping out and uh, especially around the teeth and things. It's darkened them up. That's why I used like a titanium white and that uh, brighter pink because I knew it would darken up a bit. So just things to think about when you're actually making these models. And some of the pores are already starting to come out in, in him. So it's looking really nice. And like I said, you can use a paper towel for this if you wanted to. Um, I've got a big glob right there I might not want. Um, but for me, uh, I actually... I like using uh, these cotton swabs. I use them for my resin uh, print it, 3D printing, and I just find I can use them a lot in different ways. Um, but yeah, so there it is. I'm not seeing any mess ups or anything like that. Okay. And there we go. And the other thing I did not mention, it is quite all right to give multiple coats of dry, uh, ink washes. Um, ink washes are perfectly fine to use multiple times. It's however many times you want it. So if you want it looking darker and darker, you're more than welcome to keep adding things to it. Um, it's just one of those things that that is how you're going to get some of those cool looks and techniques. Um, so maybe in some areas it's a little darker than others. Okay, so that concludes ink washing for 3D prints. So you can see I've got a before and after just so you can kind of see what it looks like. Um, the one on the left is obviously when we just did the, the color blocking from the last video and the one on the right is after the ink wash has dried. So be sure to check out the next video where we talk about dry brushing and that's where we're going to really bring out a lot of the detail and it's going to really come together after that.